Absolutely. <laughs> you definitely <laughs> do. Oh man. So I'm gonna are you cool with me putting your LinkedIn in the pro in the in the description? 100%. So Eddie, you, I you, need you, friends. <laughs> trust me, you're gonna get a lot of friends for Eddie, sure. I do coaching sessions, just a plug. Yeah, uh, that's what I was gonna say because this is only a taste of what you know the knowledge that she has. She's just giving, of course, an, a broader view of it. But if you want to get a coaching session with her, I'm gonna put her LinkedIn in the description below. Reach out to her because she's a, an amazing resource. She loves to have these conversations with people and really help people. You know, that's yes. one thing I really love about her. And I but, keep it real. And she keeps it real. She keeps it one hundred. I will right? tell you if it's not good. I'll be like. Let's not grow and work for you, sis. I, I'm not afraid. <laughs> you know, I will hey, but, dig. <laughs> yeah, but we need that. We need that. People to talk about Glassdoor, people to kind of walk you through all these different things that you may not yeah. be aware of but that as a tool that you can use. Um, I'm going to pivot real quickly to talk about sure. you for a second because let's not, you know, you, you made it to this place and you're doing well. Can you talk about the success you've had since you started working at Thousand Eyes? Sure. Absolutely. I will say this, you know, I started off a little on the struggle bus, you know, I had imposter syndrome is real out here in these streets, guys, you know, I had never worked in corporate America and I'm African American, you know what I'm saying? So sometimes, and this is just real, um, you know, and I love people of all races, you know what I'm saying? It's, it's nothing against people. It's just my view and how, I, you know, how I felt at that time. Um, just being honest about that. Sometimes you can feel like a black dot on white paper, man. You know, and you can feel intimidated and you can feel not seen or, you know what I'm saying? Like, you could just feel that way. And sometimes it's just in your head, you know, really. But sometimes it's real. Like, it is real. You know what I'm saying? We're a minority. <laughs> Hello. Um, and it's and it, it's new, you know. You don't know nothing, <laughs> you know. You know a little bit, but not, not enough, you know. Or at least you think you don't. Um, so that is a real thing. And sometimes it can be crippling. Okay. One thing I can say that I love about Cisco, about my company, is that <laughs> they, Thousand Eyes has this thing, right? This is like our company thing. Every person that comes in, you get to choose a superhero alter ego. Okay. That thing sounds just like silly, funny, you know cool that's you know it's like a little niche cool thing but i took it as a mindset that i put on i took it for real i didn't play about that thing i i wanted to make sure whoever my alter ego was it represented me and the person who i wanted to show up as every time i got on my meetings with those people so that i wouldn't allow imposter syndrome to consume me so I, this is something that I, this, I don't know. Well, it's not embarrassing, but I'll go ahead and tell y'all this. When I was nervous, when I first started after onboarding, all that good stuff. And I had to just toss me out the, out the desk, you know, you had to do that, that meeting on your own, you know, by yourself, nobody's shadowing with you. Um, it's scary, but you know what I do? I pose, I do a superhero pose before every call. So it's like my little superwoman pose and my alter ego is the disco dazzler from x-men circa 1980 to 1990s she's a beast and she's a musician she's a singer she's a roller skater and the cool thing about her is her superpower was she could turn light beams into this like immense thing that could just like take out everybody you know it like from her singing and from her being of like, you know, like her joy and her music and um, what's inside. And and I love that because that, that was like me. So I become the disco dazzler and I dazzle people with my personality when I get on a call. And I think that has been a contributing factor in my success is in the sense of I have been able to take, uh, instead of focusing on what I can't do well, um, I focused on what I can do well. And I and I attribute that a large part in um, Cisco providing for us what I call EROs. So this is something that I think is vitally important when you're looking into a company, especially when you're people of color. Um, you want to know that they have a culture that is focused on 
DEI and making space where you can feel comfortable to talk to other people that are like you, um, that can share, that can give you tips, advice. And this is a constant thing. I joined like five of them jokers. I was not playing. I was in black, black, uh, uh, Cisco, black professionals, Native American network, women of Cisco. Uh, I joined about four or five of them, interfaith. And I'm so glad that I did. That was one of the best decisions I made. I did it early. I did it early. I didn't wait around. I joined them as soon as I got in there. And this was advice from my career coach from SV. And she was like, get involved quickly. Don't wait. Don't just put your head down and do your work. Get involved. And that's what I did. And it was the best decision I made in my life. Got involved. I got in the executive shadowing program with one of uh, the uh, one of the directors of HR, people in communities. That's what we call it. And the advice that I got. Um, doing a lot of one-to-ones. My boss had us do a lot of one-to-ones with people that's been in the company, just getting out there. And um, I took a, a course with one of the EROs, Native American Network, and it was um, called the Strength Finders. I don't know if you ever heard of it. It's called a Strength Finders Test. It's awesome. It's by Gallups. It's dope. Yeah, heard of it. Yeah, and I and I got to know what my strengths were, and it empowered me, man. I started focusing on what is Nikki good at? What do you do well? Because when they gave that um, statistic about people do much better when they focus on their strengths and, 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 and making those stronger than they do with trying to focus on their, their weaknesses to try to make them stronger. It doesn't work as well. It, it's like a small percentage you could end up doing better. But with your strengths, it's a large percentage. You end up doing so much better when you focus on that. And so when I when I did that, when that thing got down in my spirit, it's like a light bulb went off. Whereas I was kind of middle ground, you know what I'm saying? At that point, this was like my fourth month or fifth month. I'm telling you, after I took that, it was like light switch, okay? Because after that, it was like pew, pew, pew. So I have been the top one and two every month for seven seven months or so i haven't missed quota in i don't know how long and i, I usually exceed quota I, i'm either meeting or exceeding most of the time i'm exceed i would say out of those seven i would say five of them is exceeding you know and so when you get that when you get that first bonus check from doubling your saos or sales accepted opportunities we call them mm -hmm. They come with, they come with, I don't think people understand though, that they actually, I think for your company too, they come with uh, accelerators or almost like they kind of like yes, multipliers, right? Yes, that's a part right? of your contract that you can, now every company doesn't do that. You know, every yeah. company is different with that. That's why negotiating your contract is very, very important. And that's something that I um, stress a lot in my coaching sessions, um, negotiating your contract. Again, plug to SB, bro. SB, man. And Brandon. Thank you, Brandon, because he helped me to understand what that even meant. Because I didn't know what that meant. I just was like, how much I'm going to make? Oh, okay, good. But when he was saying, he was like, your contract says accelerators in it. That's good. Ask them about accelerators because that means when you, and this is what I mean when I say accelerators. If my meeting, when I have a meeting um, with a with a client, and it's worth, let's say, a hundred bucks per meeting. When you get, when you pass or pass your quota and you get into accelerators, that means it's double. So it's two hundred. And for me, that's great. But for my SAOs, the sales accepted opportunities, from when you pass that on to the AM, and they say this is good, I'm running with this. That is like thirteen hundred dollars. It adds up, folks. <laughs> it adds up. Well, when you get that, when you get that uh five digit <laughs> paycheck for the first time, I remember my first big paycheck. I was like, oh. Ooh. And I get paid monthly. When I got that first big one, I was like, oh, I'm never going not make quota. Oh, <laughs> oh, never again. <laughs> never happening. I, Your face. When I saw that and I saw what I could, when I saw my, my savings account grow, 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 I was like, this is amazing. This is a blessing. I'm so thankful. Mm -hmm. And 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 I love, you know what I love about sales? Mm -hmm. That's very different from 
that's very different from um I think I saw saw my about to bust in my room. And any other like a lot of other uh positions out there, like hourly work. In hourly work, you could work as hard as you want. You could over exceed, you could, you could like be the best customer service person out there. You could like go above and beyond for anybody. But when I tell you, you still gonna make that same fifteen dollars an hour. I don't care what you do, right? But in ours, the merit of your hard work pays off, meaning you can make so much more money, so much more money. And thank in you. The same Dan, amount. Dan Kelly, um, he 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 came on and he was like kind of coaching us and giving us advice. We had a session, we call them just in time enablement sessions. He came on, he was so transparent about his like income and stuff. He the man, because a lot of people don't do that. And I appreciated him for doing that. But he was saying, you know, um, he took a job that had a, a less, um, you know, base salary, far less, like $40,000 less. Mm. And, and we was like, what? Why would you do that? But he said, because of the way the contract was set up, it was no cap. So what he did was he worked his butt off. He knew how to sell. So he was like, oh, I could do this. I got a great product. I could do this. And he ended up making two times more than he would have ever made it that, at that job because it's sales. You get paid off the merit of your hard work, mm. which I love. Mm. So that mm. was just like, I, I kind of went off on a tangent, but since I love then, tangents here. <laughs> since then, um, I was one of you know the successes that have come, which has blown me away because I I was like I'm not worthy, but I'm so thankful. But it's because I work hard, you know. I really do. I work hard. I, I'm I'm very strategic, you know, minded in everything that I do. I came in here not playing. One of the um one of the uh like like our mottos and SB is no free lunch, right? So I came in with that mindset. No free lunch. I'm hungry out here. I don't play. I come, I'm coming for your neck. <laughs> not in a bad way, you know, and not even in an overly uh, competitive way, more in a way of I need to be able to live and get the things that I want so that I can leave a legacy. I want to make an impact. I want to live with purpose. I want to help people. You know what I'm saying? I want to improve my company. I want my team is to be successful. I want my awesome boss of a leader to look good because she's amazing. Well, all this has been poured into me. I want to be able to pour it out. So I have like a lot of drive, you know what I'm saying? And I don't even want to call it ambition, but it is, I guess, in a sense. Some people would call it that, but it's like my drive, I'm, I'm driven by purpose, you know what I'm saying? So it's like I get joy just from helping people get in and, and be able to change their family's life so like no free lunch so hustle mentality that's like hustle game i'm always on <laughs> on that but it's like not money is not even really the motivator for me per se i'm not very Purpose. much motivated it's i think that comes when you work yeah. hard either way in this industry you know what i'm saying like you get rewarded for your hard work which i love you know what i'm saying and since then I have gotten myself involved in a lot of um, volunteering within the company. They have a lot of opportunities for that. So I joined CBP, which is the Cisco Black Professionals. I got a mentor within there. Her name is Karen. She's amazing. And she, just from our conversation, she was like, I think it would be great for the mental health and well-being. Oh, is that, is that an ERG, like an employee resource group? That's what you're talking about? Yeah, pretty much. Okay. We call them cool. ERO. They yeah. have different names. But it's basically a group that is, you know, like I said, an interfaith and Native American at work. And there's something for everybody. I love it. Mm -hmm. um, but Karen, she was like, I think you'd be great in this because mental health and wellness is really big for me. My father's mental, mental health, my mom, um, I was, I worked in mental health for eight years before moving to New Orleans. So always big on my list. And I said, absolutely. Sure. Let's do it. And now I'm a committee member for on um, the mental health and well-being pillar for CBP. I've been doing that for several months. Um, and I just, oh my gosh, this is like huge. And I don't think I told anybody this. So this is hot off the press because we just found out about it last week. I was chosen um, for the ASAP program with Thousand Eyes, which is basically an advisory board um, for all of the American sales. So it's only 10 people was chosen. I was one of the 10. And we basically get an ear to leadership. We get to be boots on the ground, wow. hear what the people are saying, and affect change 
and our company. Like we can put processes in a place for sales, for um, increasing pipeline, um, making uh, programs and initiatives. Like we can do anything. It's totally yeah. open. So that is huge. They literally will, the CEO of the company will hear our ideas out and say, yes, let's do it. Let's put it, I, I'll put the resources behind it. Great idea. Let's get it going. That is huge because that Listen, won't just affect me. That affects everybody. Listen, family, let, let me talk about that for a second because that right there is amazing. Like the fact that she, Such wow, that Nikki was able to be, you know, to be in this position, that's not, that's not heard of a lot, but you get those opportunities in tech. You're respected in a different way in tech when you can show yourself, prove yourself, gain a level of visibility that Nikki was able to gain. And so that is that is amazing. I want to just kind of come uh I want to kind of put a nice bow on this real quickly and yeah. talk about the mindset. Now what would you say uh, 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 there's one word that would some the mindset somebody needs to have in order to be Nikki and to scale where Nikki's <sighs> Nikki is <laughs> I don't know if I can put it into one word. <laughs> um, I don't think I can put it into one word. I think I wrote down a couple of things because I think mm -hmm. that is a very important thing, right? But I I wrote down three things, right? So number one, work your strengths. That was a game changer for me. Work your strengths. Um, have a desire to genuinely help people. Because when you're genuine and when you're authentic, that comes through to people. And I think you'll find more success with that. And number three, begin with the end in mind. Mm. Mm. And I think that speaks to being strategic in everything that you do. So, like, begin with the end in mind. So, I do that every month. Okay? Mm. I do that every month. And I try to think, like, my management. What are they looking from me? What and there's five things. There's five metrics they're looking at. They're looking at your quota. They're looking at your S SAO rate. They're looking at looking at your meetings held rate. They're looking at your call conversion rate. Rate and their and your your connections. Okay, so with those things in mind, and I know that's what my boss is looking at. I need to know those things. I need to know how to attain those things every by the end of the month. So everything I do, if I know that it takes sixty calls to get three meetings. I'm going to do everything times two so that I can fall where I want to be. I learned that in SV. There's like a, it's like a, uh, like a math calculation. You know what I'm saying? So everything that you need, cause he, cause here's the thing. Let's be real. Let's be real. People don't have to say yes to you. <laughs> they don't. You don't have, there's no guarantees. Okay. You're trying to woo a person onto a meeting but at the end of the day, stuff happens. Stuff happens, man. People get busy. They have other stuff to work on. They got kids running around. You know what I'm saying? Like, you just got to be human. And I found that doing that has been very, very helpful. And those, and I think that's the mindset that I have. I take with me to work every day. Begin with the end in mind. Be genuine and work my strengths. Man. I'm, I'm processing it. I'm just like, <laughs> I'm processing everything, your whole entire story. And I'm just like, man, this is, this is going to be, uh, this, this episode of Tech Niche Tips is going to bless a lot of people for I years to come. So. I think oh, that man. putting in the hard work and, you know what I'm saying? Like I said, being genuine, being human, wanting to genuinely help people. I heard this quote from Steve Jobs where... <laughs> Steve Jobs, right? And he was like being questioned. It was like an open talk. And he like somebody just came went for him, man. Like was like, you're the leading, blah, 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 blah. And he was like, you know what? That may be true. He disarmed him with like kindness. It was amazing. He was like, that may be true to a degree. But I'll tell you what is different about us. I come in not wanting to sell something to somebody. I come in wanting to solve people's problems absolutely help someone because when you can help someone and build that trust they'll follow you wherever you go because they'll stay loyal to you and i do that every day with my clients i go above and beyond with customer service i go above and beyond hearing out their pains hearing out what their needs are caring about their team and i think that is important as well like i love my product i love what we do for network teams 
Like we give them relief to the pressures that they face trying to navigate the black box, which is the internet. And when people, when I tell people I understand and I give them an example of how we've helped someone else to relieve that stress, they be like, heaven sent from above. They be like, sure, mm. I'm going to be next to whoever. Yes, please, I need help. <laughs> you know, and I think that's, you know, that's the most important thing. And I think to kind of put it in a bow, like you said, I think all of those things and having that mindset and genuinely wanting to help people got me the biggest honor that I received this year, which is, um, you know, I believe when you do good things, you know, things, good things come back. And someone, you know, who I helped get into tech um, nominated me for NOLA Black in Tech 30s list. And I never in a million years thought I would deserve it, maybe, <laughs> or anything you know uh, to have that honor but here I am I'm I was awarded that you know this I couldn't believe it I was ecstatic and I I was like dad I got it he was so proud and I was like I don't know why but I got it and he was like I can tell you why and this stuck with me he was like you are just coming into tech you've only been in there a year he was like, you know how many people come into a new job, they get in their career, they start making their money, they just keep their head down and work. You know what you did? The first thing you did was start helping other people get into tech. You took everything you learned and helped others to change their lives too. And he was like, a lot of people don't do that, baby. That's why you got that award. That's why someone thought to nominate you. And I was yeah. like... Well, <laughs> shut the door. Praise God. I was like, I ain't think about it that way, Dad. Thank you so much. Just a little change of perspective. Because sometimes you can be humble to a fault. And I can be that way sometimes. But, you know, it's good to be able to have people to see what's inside of you. And to mm -hmm. be able to call it out. And it's good to be honored for the, the things that you do. And I just feel super thankful. I got my little award. And I was just having it on my desk. And I was just. Just so proud. I had to reflect this year on everything because it was a lot, <laughs> you know. Yeah. It was a lot. And and hard work does pay off and people see you. So you just gotta keep at it. Mm, you know what? It's uh, it's I know that somebody probably grabbed the grabbed, grabbed the Kleenex just now and was like, Oh, and your dad said that to you because it's, it's Oh, so, I know, I teared up. <laughs> it, it it's amazing when you have people, family members especially, that can look in at your journey and say, Man, I'm proud of you. Yeah. Because sometimes there's people that's probably watching this call right now and they're saying, you know what, I'm afraid to break into tech because I either made a lot of promises that I didn't keep. I'm speaking from my, from my personal experience. You know, I'm a, I'm a dreamer. So I would say things and, and not realize the impact my words had on my spouse or other people. Mm -hmm. And they'll be like, well, well, I'll say she would be like, wait, did you actually? I don't know if you kept that promise you said. And so for me, this, that was a motivating factor. To break in so now there's a new level of ad admiration my wife has for me she's been able to stay home with the child with our baby and a few of our other kids at this time because she's on maternity leave but we were actually thinking about the idea of her actually staying even longer and so all these things, okay. things these things couldn't happen if we if, if myself you did not take be sacrificial lambs and take that initiative to learn a new skill to really kind of be bold to break into this field. And so I want to just pivot the conversation to those that are watching here. You might have apprehensions of whether or not you should break into tech. You may think, hey, I want to stay where I'm at, but you know where you're at is not going to get you where you want to go. Mm -hmm. uh, you may have apprehensions based off of the people around you saying, you know what, I don't think you could do that. But this is a time and opportunity for you to actually prove them wrong, not in a malicious way, not in a, like I'm going to you know, have bitterness or resentment towards that person. But you want to do it in a way of, OK, I, you know, they may not feel that I can do it, but I'm going to show them in love that I can do this thing. And so that may be you right now. And I want to encourage you, excuse me, whatever path that you decide to take, whether it is going through a tech boot camp. Um, like SV Academy or my, or even course careers. And you know where my links are at. So you could drop that in the description below. If that is something that you feel like you need to kind of get that undergirding to do it. You need to get that knowledge, I should say, to get there and that, that, that instruction and that guidance. But you may be a person that actually, you know, like I love to use that quote from Warren Buffett. If you're in a chronologically leaking boat, more energy 
actually transferring to another boat is better than trying to patch all those leaks. And I'm paraphrasing a little bit. Exactly. But you want to be in that position. Better get off before you sink. <laughs> you want to get off before you sink, exactly. And so, and so, and so, sometimes you may have those same sales skills, the same skill that you have. You may be working in scales, whether it's a mattress store or even working with cars or working in solar, like I was. You could take those same skills to an industry that, like what happened with Nikki, they not only train you up and and they not only value your input, they'll 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 put you in the places that you never thought you were going to be. She's speaking to she's speaking to executives on the team. And she has an ear to the CEO, but... and they gave her a raise. So... And you only and you only been there for a year, right? A little. A, I got a, a raise. I got a raise like at my seventh month. <laughs> in the seventh month, and you've been um in that position. I mean. Uh, in that company for just a year, right? Just yeah, it's a year just now. Raise. I got a 5% raise in mm. seven months in because my leader valued and saw in me. Mm. You know what I'm saying? I, mm. Abby, bye, Phil. I don't care. I'm going to go ahead and put your name out there. <laughs> I couldn't have asked for a better boss. Yeah. She is like such an inspiration. She really cares. And once yeah. she pushes you to be the best, you know, best mm -hmm. you can be. And then when you do it, reward. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Wow. And at the end of the day, intrinsically as humans, we want that. We need yes. that. That's psychology. You need to have a reward for your hard work. And that's yeah. why so many people struggle in, in dead end careers. Mm -hmm. They don't have it's no purpose in it. Yeah. They're just doing a job to survive. And they don't get rewarded for the work they do do. It's Absolutely. damning to your mental capacity. Like you can't, mm -hmm. it it has people out here wanting to, to, to die. Yeah. You know yeah. So literally that's this. Seriously. Is, what you do with your life is so important. And yeah. all I know is I never thought that with this, in, with this uh, job that I was going to be able to make the impact that I was able to do. Mm -hmm. I did. He knew. Yes, he did. He knew. That's why my tattoos say change hearts. Mm. That's all I want to do with my life. <laughs> yeah. I didn't think it was going to be a tech because I am not a technical person. I mm -hmm. was told that a million times. Mm -hmm. But the impact yeah. that I've been able to have just from being just from being an influence in this industry. And all I want to do is keep doing it. Awesome. Yeah. That's it. Just keep going up. This this has been so rich. I normally say there's gems everywhere, but there's there were there were this was a gold mine. There were gold. There was gold in this conversation. There's some people that are watching this that are to the point of tears because they didn't feel like they're enough. You are enough as you are. I feel like we need. I feel you like have we need everything that. you need to. We're ministry. So that's one of my favorite songs. By say Shalea. it again. There's a song by Shalea. It's called "You Are Enough." That's one of my mm. songs. It says, "You are enough. You have mm. everything." you need to succeed it's already in you mm. man some people are being ministered to by this conversation some people are having like breakthroughs right now some people are at a point of tears based off of this conversation that we're having um because they didn't they, they haven't heard of this they haven't heard that they're enough they haven't heard that their journey that that's why i have this channel because the journey and the experiences that they make you who you are and it and my wife said this and i said this again in, in another interview she said i looked at your life I look at your circumstances. I look at where you, at what you have gone through just to get here, and it all built you up for this moment. So your next moment, people, to pivot into tech, this is this is this culmination. If you want an excuse, if you want a reason to do it, look at Nikki. Look at myself. Look at us. Look at the people that have also interviewed in the past, and realize that this is your culmination. This is your awakening. This is your moment to make a decision that could change the course of your life and with that being said this has been an amazing time i mean we could keep talking forever but yeah. i want you to ponder I'm on proud that of moment you. i'm so proud of you i want to say that thank you. thank you i am so proud of what you've done in such a short period of time it's been a beautiful beautiful thing to watch mm. and i'm just so glad and i always say this about everybody like about human existence period i'm so glad to be a page in your book man likewise because you you I would I wouldn't be here if it wasn't for the words that you shared. Honestly, it was a motivating factor for me. So, and so, your story is motivation for me. Look at that every cycle. Every time I hear, every time some, one of my the people that I speak with or I coach that I talk to, I have a conversation with to inspire, to give tips, whatever. 
whenever they hit me back and be like, Nikki, thank you so much. Your words impacted me so much. Mm. I got the job. I got the job. That's what we want. That's what we want. all we hear. What we hear. <laughs> Your story, it, it gives me so much joy, man. Mm. So thank much you. joy. Because your income has doubled. <sighs> And you got awesome. family to take care of. You got a legacy to leave. So anything, any contribution to see that end result and then to see you doing so well. You got Freezer, bro. Freezer's a great company. Thank okay. You. Thank you. We work with Freezer. So I know y'all know. Okay. Yeah. So, <laughs> they are. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. and you're going to be treated well. And you're going to do great because you already, like, when you were talking about your past, mm. all of those past experiences are relevant. They are. And they matter. And they mm. would make you good at what you do nobody yeah. could do what you do That's nobody right. they don't know what you know they don't they haven't been through what you've been through mm. and people relate to that mm. even if they are in corporate they still yeah. they still put they pant leg one at a time they still got kids <laughs> running in the background on That's the phone. Right. sorry my kid my, my kid's sick i understand my my nephew Wait, just threw up on you, me laugh and i <laughs> i got him I tell people my nephews throw up on me all the time. They love it. And then they say, you know, SAO. <laughs> <laughs> That's real life. This is real. This is laugh. so real. This is so real. Like, I remember that. Uh, uh, this is the last thing I want to say. We'll wrap it up. But there's, there, was a, there was a guy that had an interview. And he, I think his, his child came running in right behind him. It was He was being interviewed by two people at the same time. Ran in right behind him. And he was like trying to kind of trying to get the, the child out the way. He stood up and he he had his boxes on. He forgot. And he's like, "Oh no, <laughs> you guys saw that." And and the person and I love this for the person that was interviewing him. He was like, you can tell he's a senior person in the company. And he's like, and he's like, I can't believe he did that. And he stood up too, and his boxes were on. Yeah, and it. so I was like, and he's. I mean, I remember it was just a beautiful sign of humanity. You know, and I'm so about to say, let me settle down. Okay. I know, right? <laughs> I have my Wait. athletic. I have like the business at the top, athletic wear at the bottom. Hey, hey, hey! It's we work from home. We I completely get it. <laughs> we, I we love do it. it. We do. I wouldn't it. trade it for nothing in the world. Okay? I, I promise you, you, I would. You, you and me both. You and me both. I can't go back. But with that being said, we had a, such a great conversation. Um, I hope you enjoyed this time talking talking to Nikki because she's amazing. I'm going to drop her LinkedIn below so you could uh, not harass her, but you could reach out to her and talk to her. And she's open to talking to you. And so until next time, I hope to see you on the other side. Take care, family. So we can run this race together.